Hi everyone and welcome to the latest episode of the podcast. This episode is going to be dedicated to an article that was published about Spotify's algotorial playlists. Yes, you heard that right, algotorial, a mix of algorithmic and editorial playlists that are pretty common in Spotify, but not everyone is really aware of how they work, how they are created, and how powerful they are. So let's get into this latest episode. So for this episode, I'm going to be loosely reading from a blog post from engineering.atspotify.com, which is the Spotify research and development blog. So I'm reading their information. If it's not word for word, don't come at me after this. Um, but I found this really interesting and I encourage you to check out the original blog post. I've included the link that they posted in the notes for this episode of the podcast. So let's get into it. Firstly, here's the too long didn't read section. Since 2017, Spotify has been working to create a better listening experience for our users by applying the expertise of our curators with algorithmic personalization. The outcome of these efforts has resulted in what we call, quote, algatorial playlists, end quote. Now let's dive into the first section here. The best of both worlds, editorial and algorithms. Spotify has a library of playlists for almost every occasion, be it different moods, activities, genres, eras, new music, top hits, emerging artists, cultural moments, or regional listening trends. Some of these playlists, such as Rap Caviar and Peaceful Piano, are created and maintained by our editorial team. They are distinctive based on genres or localities. One editor might concentrate on hip-hop, while another editor focuses on the music being produced and listened to in Brazil. This specialization allows them to have a deeper understanding of the music that artists have created and the ways users listen to them. This is particularly powerful as it allows editors to be aware of small trends or cultural events that drive the ever-changing way users are consuming music. While the Rap Caviar and Peaceful Piano playlists are owned by our editorial team, others like Discover Weekly, Daily Mix, and Your Time Capsule are powered by our personalization algorithms. These algorithms take a look at the audio attributes of music and can find similarities across tracks to identify what songs are often listened to together. Often listened to together. So by combining a user's listening history with the relationships across tracks, we can create a unique list of songs for each one of our users based on what we think they will like. We're going to take a quick break here. After this, I'm going to read the section about creating an algator <laughs> about creating an algatorial playlist and exactly how they are created internally. Once again, I am reading this directly from the Spotify blog. If I don't read it exactly word for word, don't come for me. There is a link in the show notes. We'll be right back after this quick message. Welcome back, and we are diving into creating an algatorial playlist. The process of creating an algatorial playlist starts with the editors. Our editors begin by envisioning a specific user need. Let's take an activity like a road trip, for example. Once the user's need is defined, the editor creates a content hypothesis. In our road trip example, the editor decides... The content hypothesis could be familiar songs you know, all the words to, and would sing along to. Knowing what songs might be particularly singable, quote end quote, <laughs> is difficult to describe in algorithms. It might be the song that was on repeat last summer, or a particularly catchy refrain that is repeated over and over. Maybe it appeared in a TV show or movie recently to remind you of your teenage years. It's hard to describe why, but you know it when you hear it. This is where human intuition comes in. The editor collects tracks that could be appropriate for the playlist and adds them to what we call a, quote, pool, end quote, P-O-O-L. This pool 
combines their musical and cultural expertise as well as advanced filtering for searches they've conducted to help narrow down the vast universe of possible songs to the most relevant ones. They also have access to metrics to see what tracks have been performing well in the playlist and which have not. Because the editors are choosing potential candidates instead of the exact order of the final playlist, they can expand the pools to a slightly wider range of tastes and not just the most obvious and popular tracks. They don't need to aim for a balance that will make everyone happy. They can pick songs that will appeal to a wide range of listeners. After the pool is created, the algorithms take over, picking out the appropriate tracks and placing them in order for each given user. This is particularly helpful for playlists on broad topics. In our road trick, <laughs> excuse me, in our road trip example, the playlist might have a mix of pop, indie, rock, and hip hop in the pool. With personalization, this one playlist can suit a wide variety of listeners while trusting that all of the candidates are still, quote, singable, end quote. Finally, the editor works with Spotify, excuse me, finally, the editor works with the Spotify design team to brand the playlist's title, description, and imagery. They can further personalize by having the imagery optionally chosen based on the listener's tastes. For example, a 60s rock playlist might have one image with a British invasion artist and another with a surf rock artist. We will display the image of the artist for which the user has the most affinity. The end result of these combined efforts? A new algatorial playlist designed for road trips. The example given, songs to sing in the car. Now we're going to take another quick break and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to read the section adapting to our listeners and learning from our experts. Now, once again, I am reading this as close to word for word as possible. There is a link to the full post, the full article from the Spotify R&D engineering team in the show notes for this episode. We'll be right back. Welcome back. The next section is adapting to our listeners. In broad strokes, we use various machine learning techniques to analyze a user's listening history to better predict which songs they will want to listen to. We then take those preferences and apply an order to the tracks in a way that flows together, creating an enjoyable listening session. Sometimes those preferences don't react fast enough for emerging trends. Therefore, we allow editors to, quote, pin, end quote, tracks to force the inclusion in the playlist. This means the editor can finesse areas that our algorithms get wrong and allow for more data collection so the system can learn new relationships. In a sense, the editors can teach the system that certain tracks are related and eventually the pin can become removed and the algorithms will include the track where appropriate. As listeners engage with the playlist, their actions such as listening, skipping or saving to their library help train our recommendation algorithm about how to best use the tracks in our music library. Additionally, those signals influence our representation of the listener's taste profile to improve the recommendations they receive in the future. We are simultaneously learning ways to improve our recommendations for all users, as well as the individual listener. On to the final section, learning from experts. Personalization is at the heart of what we do. When we ask our listeners what they like most about Spotify, more than 81% cite our personalization. Algatorial, has been extremely successful in taking the expertise of our editorial team and scaling it so that every listener on Spotify can have a personalized experience. Through this collaboration between humans and machines, we are constantly learning and improving what goes into a great listening experience. This allows our passion for music with, excuse me, this allows our passion for music to be shared with millions of listeners every day. Looking for a playlist for a specific occasion? Check out some of our favorite algatorial playlists. 
including the aforementioned ones on the Spotify app. And then they go on to list these playlists. I'm going to mention some of these and then we're going to wrap this up. Lo-fi beats, 90s country, mood booster, songs to sing in the car, beast mode, my life as a movie, classic road trip songs. So once again, this is a post that was posted on engineering.atspotify.com, which is the official blog of the Spotify engineering team. In, in this case, the Spotify research and development team as well. And it says here it was published by Christopher Barthel, B-A-R-T-H-L-E, who is an engineering manager at Spotify. And it was published on April 27, 2023. As mentioned, disclaimer one more time, I'm reading this as close to word for word as possible. I may have left some words out, but you can go and read the blog post in the show notes. I found this incredibly helpful. This is me talking, not reading the article now. I found this incredibly valuable as someone that pays close attention to personalized editorial, aka algotorial playlists, because it means that when a song gets on there, it may not be delivered to every listener, but it will be delivered to listeners who would most likely be interested in that song within the playlist. One example from personal experience is a playlist called Weekend Hangouts, in which one of our songs was added. It was more of a like chilled out pop song. And some people would hear the playlist and they would hear pop music. Some people would listen to the playlist and they would hear dance music within the playlist. Others may hear rock, others may hear country. And so one playlist followed by a large amount of people can have a significantly different pool of songs that are being delivered to each individual listener. So one way that you can check this is some of the podcasts, excuse me, podcasts, some of the algatorial playlists I mentioned before, let's say Beast Mode or Lo-Fi Beats or Songs to Sing in the Car, Get two people with different Spotify accounts, sit next to each other, open the same playlist, and you will see a very different selection of songs within those playlists for you. This is part of Spotify's um, algorithmic technique, for lack of a better word, it's been a long day, where they are looking at the end listener and trying to serve the most relevant music for them, as opposed to the same 100 or 200 songs for each listener. So I encourage you to check out the full blog post. I've included it in the show notes. As always, thank you so much for listening. And if you enjoyed this podcast, please let me know, leave a comment, tell a friend, share what you've learned. You don't even need to credit me. Just share what you've learned. This knowledge is meant to be shared. It's not meant to be kept to ourselves. And until the next time, keep creating, keep learning and keep sharing. Thank you.